I can hear you say that I'm the one. At times I feel your lips press close to mine, but what good has that dreaming done? Hello, Brooke. FaceTiming does not do justice. Thank you, Philip. No, Brooke, I was talking about myself. You should have seen me when I was your age. That would be quite impossible. Even if I was alive then, there were no cell phones to FaceTime each other. Anyway, I tease. You look more beautiful than ever. But about the show. Cousin Rob suggested a very interesting theme. At first, I thought to myself, there must be lots of singers that fit this common thread. And there are. But then I got inquisitive. Of course you did. I looked for special cases to limit the scope. And I was truly shocked to find that there were barely enough singers to fit the limitations I placed on Cousin Rob's theme to make a complete show. But I did find enough, barely. In fact, most of the singers Cousin Rob had originally suggested are in this show. I had to add a few and take off a few since they did not meet the new criteria. But this is basically a great Cousin Rob show. I hope you like it. You do have the playlist I sent you, right, Brooke? Yes, Philip. And I have done my homework. I even knew quite a few of these singers. They are all very famous, even if a few were before my time. That's what I was going for. I did not use any singers from the big band era, but there would be plenty more to fit the common thread if I did. Philip, I'll take it from here. I believe it's your nap time. It is, Brooke. But don't tell everybody. I will talk to you soon. Stay well. Welcome everybody. This is the Antique Music Mall. I am your host, Brooke Palmer. This is show number 33. Ain't No Mountain High Enough, was written by the Motown husband and wife songwriting duo, Ashford and Simpson. Jero, from New Alexandria, Pennsylvania, tells us, Nick Ashford was inspired by an experience he had when he first moved to New York City. He was walking down a Manhattan thoroughfare, determined that New York City would not get the best of him, and the words Ain't No Mountain High Enough, popped into his head. And it's a good thing they did. Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell had a top 20 hit with this song in 1967. And Diana Ross did not do badly either. This song spent 14 weeks in the top 100 for Miss Ross in 1970. If you watch Bridget Jones' Diary, from 2001, this song is in the soundtrack. Just call my name I'll be there in a hurry On that you can depend and never worry
sun wherever it leads. But remember, if you should fall short of your desires, remember life holds for you one guarantee. You'll always have me. And if you should miss my lover one of these old days, if you should ever miss the arms that used to hold you so close, or the lips that used to touch yours so tenderly, Just remember what I told you the day I set you free. Georgios Kyriakos Panayotou, is better known, as George Michael. This song, Faith, was one of the first digital recordings, which allowed Mr. Michael to put the song together piece by piece. His vocal was done line by line, and sometimes word by word, as he would write lyrics at the microphone, and record them on the spot. It was a very tedious process, with Mr. Michael scrutinizing every syllable. But the end result was a very polished track, with the emotional feel he was looking for. This song spent 20 weeks in Billboard's Top 100, in 1987 and 1988. The single release of Faith, is from George Michael's album from 1987, which is also called Faith. This album was ranked number 151, on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 greatest albums of all time, in 2020. George Michael left us, way too soon, in 2016, at age 53.
Truly was a very big hit for Lionel Richie in 1982 and into 1983. It spent 18 weeks in Billboard's Top 100. Mr. Ritchie wrote this song and co-produced it with James Anthony Carmichael. This song got no help from the fledgling MTV, because Mr. Ritchie did not make a video for the song. He had little reason to. The network shied away from ballads, and didn't play black artists in earnest, until Prince, and Michael Jackson broke through the following year. He made a video for his next single, The Uptempo, You Are, but MTV didn't play it. This song was from his 1982 album, also entitled Truly. In addition to being a hit in the United States, Truly made the top 10 in the United Kingdom, where the song peaked at number 6. Truly won a Grammy Award for Lionel Richie in the category Best Male Pop Vocal Performance. Girl, tell me only this That I have your heart For always And you want me by your side Whispering the words I'll always love Those were three well-known songs. Did you consider that they were all number one hits on the Billboard pop chart? You would be right. That is one common thread. However, there are two other things that we will reveal shortly. Our next number one song is by Gloria Estevan. It's called Don't Wanna Lose You. It was the number one song in the USA during the week of September 16, 1989. 
She also recorded a Spanish version of the song, Si Voy a Perderte, which reached number one on Billboard's Hot Latin Tracks chart, and a Portuguese version that was released as a single in Brazil. Ms. Estevan earned a Grammy Award nomination for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance for this song, but lost against Bonnie Raitt's Nick of Time. Sometimes it's hard To make things clear No one to face the truth And I know That the moment is here No pride I feel I've got nothing to hide So open your eyes Myself, myself. I don't wanna lose you now. We're gonna get through somehow. I don't wanna lose you now, forever. Let's hear one more song before we reveal that second common thread. I suspect many of you have picked up on that thing that all these singers have in common. But even beyond that second common thread, there is one more extraordinary accomplishment that puts these singers in a very exclusive club. From 1975 until 1979, there was a very popular, albeit, controversial show about high school delinquents, all put into the same classroom, 
to keep them from the rest of the students. That would be Welcome Back, Cotter. This is the show that introduced John Travolta to America. Cotter was played by Gabe Kaplan, whose character was a product of the same streets as his students, affectionately known as the Sweat Hogs. Here is John Sebastian's number one hit from 1976. It topped the Billboard chart during the week of May 8. It's called, Welcome Back. From the ABC television show, Welcome Back, Cotter. Welcome back Your dreams were your ticket out Welcome back To that same old place that you laughed about Well the names have all changed since you hung around But those dreams have remained and they've turned around Who'd have thought they'd lead ya? Who'd have thought they'd lead ya? Many of you knew that all these singers originally became famous by being the lead singer of a successful group. I know, so do lots of singers who eventually venture forth into solo careers. But here's the kicker. They all had number one hits as solo artists. That is what we are featuring in this podcast. And, they also had number one hits, as the lead singer for their group. There are 12 songs featured in this podcast, and I challenge you to find another singer who can make that claim. We were very surprised to see what a rare accomplishment this is on the Billboard pop chart. Diana Ross had five number one hits as a solo artist. We played her very first number one hit as a solo artist, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. She also had 12 number one hits as the lead singer of The Supremes. George Michael had three number one hits as the lead singer of Wham! But as a solo artist, he had five number one hits. Faith was his first. He also had number one hits in duets. One was with Aretha Franklin and one with Elton John. As lead singer of the Commodores, Lionel Richie had two number one hits. They were three times a lady and still. He also reached the top of Billboard's pop chart four times. You heard, truly. That was his first. However, even before Truly, he had a number one hit with Diana Ross, Endless Love. 
Gloria Estevan is forever linked to the Miami Sound Machine. That's because she married, in 1978, the bandleader, Emilio Estevan, and as she put it, my first and only boyfriend. As a member of Miami Sound Machine, she had one number one hit, Anything For You. In 1989, the group's name was dropped, and she has been credited as a solo artist ever since. Gloria Estevan has had two number one hits credited as a solo artist. And you just heard John Sebastian's only number one hit. Welcome back. But, in addition to his two number two hits with The Loving Spoonful, Summer in the City hit number one in 1966. John Sebastian also co-wrote that number one song. Eddie Kendricks was well known for his distinctive falsetto singing style. He co-founded the Motown singing group The Temptations, and was one of their lead singers from 1960 until 1971. In particular, he was the lead singer on The Temptations' number one hit, Just My Imagination, Running Away With Me. As a solo artist, he recorded several hits of his own during the 1970s, including the number one single, Keep On Truckin', Part 1. This song spent 19 weeks in the Hot 100 and was number one for two weeks in 1973, beginning November 10.
It's true. The antique music mall tends to play music from the baby boomer generation. Being from the end of the millennial generation myself, that seems less than fair. So Philip, these next two songs are for Generation X, and the millennials. This next song is by Beyonce. For the edification of our baby boomers, Destiny's Child had four number one hits. And Beyonce Knowles is considered the lead singer of the group, although, all the ladies in the group contribute mightily. Beyonce co-wrote three of Destiny's Child's number one hits. As a solo artist, Beyonce had six number one hits. However, three of those featured another singer. But her last three number one singles, which she also co-wrote, were credited to Beyonce alone, as a solo artist. Here's Single Ladies, Put a Ring on It, from 2008. NSYNC, If You Didn't Know It Boomers, was an American boy band formed in Orlando, Florida, in 1995. The group's album from 2000, No Strings Attached, sold over 1 million copies in one day, and 2.4 million copies in one week in the United States. A record which they held for over 15 years. And it's from that album, they charted their only number one hit, It's Gonna Be Me. Justin Timberlake took lead vocals on this track. But Mr. Timberlake had four number one hits as a solo artist. Two of those featured other singers, and two did not. This is, Can't Stop the Feeling, from the 2016 animated film, Trolls. It hit number one on the Hot 100, on May 28, 2016. I got this feeling inside my bones It goes electric wavy when I turn it on Off from my city, off from my home We're flying up no ceiling when we in our zone I got that sunshine in my pocket 
like it Got that good soul in my feet Feel that hot blood in my body When it drops, ooh I can't take my eyes off of it Moving so phenomenally Come on, like the way we rock it So don't stop Chicago had three number one hits in their illustrious 55 years. Which by the way, is still not over. They are still on tour. Peter Cetera was the lead singer for their first two number one hits, If You Leave Me Now, and, Hard To Say I'm Sorry. And his very first charting release as a solo artist hit number one on August 2, 1986. It held that spot for two weeks. The song is from the soundtrack of the film, Karate Kid Part 2, and is that movie's theme. It's called Glory of Love. His very next release, The Next Time I Fall, also hit number one. However, Amy Grant joined him on that song. This is Glory of Love. Love 
breaks my heart to see you crying. I don't want to lose you. I could never make it. Invisible Touch is the title track and first single from the 1986 album of the same name by the English rock band, Genesis. The song is a group composition which featured lyrics written by drummer and singer Phil Collins. It was their first and only number one single in the United States. And of course, Phil Collins was the lead singer on this track. But as a solo artist, Phil Collins had a slew of number one hits. Six to be exact plus another teamed up with Marilyn Martin on the song Separate Lives. This is Phil Collins' very first solo number one hit called Against All Odds, Take a Look at Me Now. It's from the movie Against All Odds, starring Jeff Bridges. How can I just let you walk away, just let you leave? Shed the laughter 
Today, Frankie Valli is 88 years old, and he is still touring. And of course, he is a Jersey boy, born in Newark. As the lead singer of The Four Seasons, Mr. Valley had five number one hits from 1962 through 1975. As a solo artist, Frankie Valli scored number one hits with the songs My Eyes Adored You from 1974, and Grease from 1978. Mark, from Sarnia, Ohio tells us, while this song was credited to just Frankie Valli, his Four Seasons bandmates sang on it with him. They recorded the song for Motown Records, who refused to release it. When the group left Motown, Mr. Valley purchased the rights to the song for $4,000 and shopped it to other record companies. They finally found a taker in the private stock record label, and the song became a huge hit and revived Mr. Valley's career. The private stock label closed down in 1978. <laughs> My eyes are Georgia Though I never laid a hand on you My eyes are Georgia Like a million miles away from me You couldn't see how I adored you So close, so close and yet so far Carried your books from school When the Beatles broke up, every Beatle band member went solo. And every Beatle band member had number one hits after leaving the Beatles. However, John Lennon is the only Beatle who ever sang lead vocal on a number one Beatle hit and also had a number one solo hit. Neither George Harrison, nor Ringo Starr, ever sang lead vocal on a number one Beatle hit song, although they both sang lead vocal on Beatles songs that did not reach the number one spot. 
George Harrison, did however, write and sing lead vocal on, For You Blue, which was the B-side of the Beatles' number one hit, The Long and Winding Road. And Ringo Starr came close. He sang lead on the Beatles' number two hit, Yellow Submarine, which did hit number one on the UK chart. But what about Paul McCartney? He sang lead for many Beatles' number one songs. Paul had a number one hit with Linda McCartney and six number one hits with Paul McCartney and Wings. Then Paul, with Stevie Wonder had a number one hit with, Ebony and Ivory. And again, Paul had a number one hit with Michael Jackson, for Say Say Say. But there were no Paul McCartney number one hits, strictly speaking, as a solo credited artist. But John Lennon did have one in 1980, called Just Like Starting Over. John Lennon and the Plastic Ono Nuclear Band, also had a number one hit in 1974. As of the date of this podcast, the Beatles' 20 number one hits, from 1964 to 1970, are the most ever on the US pop chart. Our life together is so precious together. We have grown, we have grown Although our love is still special Let's take a chance and fly away Somewhere Took the time, no one's to play in mind, no time flies so quickly. But when I see you, darling, it's like we both are falling in love again. It'll be just like starting over. Starting over.
There are also some solo artists that would have qualified for this podcast theme that were omitted for family reasons. For example, Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5 both had number one hits. And Cher of the group Sonny and Cher, technically would qualify. And let's not forget Donny Osmond of the Osmond Brothers. Both Donny and the brother group had number one hits. And strictly speaking, both Paul Simon and Simon and Garfunkel scored number one hits. But Philip was amazed at how few solo artists, and groups they came from, actually had number one hits as separate entities. Many that he thought would qualify, in fact, did not. Let us know in the comments section if there are any that you think we missed. This is an educational show and we try to be accurate. Thank you for watching or listening. This is the Antique Music Mall, show number 33. And thank you Cousin Robert for a most interesting playlist. I am your host, Brooke Palmer. Until next time, cheerio.